All right, thanks so much for jumping on board. Welcome. Big show, Joe. Yes, and if you want to ask us any question at all you like on the show, breakfast at nova919.com.au, and that's exactly what happened today. Yes, the curtains were pulled down. Oh my I think God. that's what they say. <laughs> no, it's not what they say. I think it's what they it's say. It's not at all what you they sure? say. No. <laughs> curtains were pulled back. On this particular occasion, they pulled them down. <laughs> we just got a different, different angle on each of us. Yeah. Anyway, are you schnitting me? We played that as well. Two truths, one lie, one um, correct story. Tricky one today. Yeah, tricky. real tricky one. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got there in the end, though. Involved me smacking a hole in the wall at a pub. Oh, don't punch windows. Nah, I've always said that. Key takeaway. Um, and off the back of M. Ratajkowski and Harry Styles just macking on like a couple of school kids. Yeah. Your worst kissing stories. Oh, yes. A lot of very ordinary first kisses out there. <laughs> it's all in there. It's all quite disgusting. That's the message between M. Ratajkowski and Harry Styles when they were macking on. Just a couple of middle-aged people just, like, behind a van, pashing on for the whole world to see. I just, like, in, I said this yesterday, in Juice, in theory, it should be sexy. Yeah. Two very sexy people, but visually it just wasn't. Yeah, it's like just a sole reminder that um, there can be disgusting kisses experienced all across the world from even the sexiest people. They're the sexiest people on the planet. Yeah. Mm. Harry Styles and M. Rudder. Yeah. Doesn't get any sexier than that. Yeah, and there was some suggestion that they mate, because she's friends with Olivia Wilde, who's his ex, that they used to get involved in a sort of menage a trois situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, a, yeah. Vision? Or? What, what, <laughs> what did you say? Did you see vision of that no. somewhere? Or? No, I haven't. Because, uh, yeah, okay. Anyway. Yeah. Um, it got us thinking. Yeah. Your worst kisses. Yes. That you've ever experienced. Do you want, to, do you want me to kick us off? Oh, please. Set the bar nice and high. Oh, okay. Well, this is one of the first dates I ever went on with Ben Mile down in Hobart. Okay. Uh, sorry, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Betty boy, and, but get ready for this. And I was like 13, 14, and then it hadn't even occurred to me that he might try to kiss me, and neck minute, his tongue was so far down my throat. I was like, oh, my man, what's going on? <laughs> it was awful. Sorry, Ben. Anyway, yeah. hope you're well, Duff. Yeah, Benny. Hope you're a better kiss now. I remember when I was 26, and you I You had your first kiss? <laughs> No, I was 14, and there was a girl called Hayley. I think I've told you this Oh, before. we're naming her too. Yes. <laughs> okay, here we are. Yes, but we haven't, strangely, we haven't seen each other since. Yeah. So it was just a weird one where I think we were both in the same situation. We hadn't kissed before, mm. and it was a school dance, and we started kissing, and then you're locked in on one side, like <laughs> like just going at it. And I, I'm not kidding. I reckon we are going for 15 minutes. And I, think, and I think we were both thinking the same thing, like, how do we move around? <laughs> How do you move your heads around like they do in the movies? Yeah. And also, how do we stop? Like, how do you stop? Um, I just said, but then we're like, oh, we're too nervous to stop. It was an absolute mess. It wasn't pleasurable at all. I'm like, this is actually quite disgusting. You were just like locked in and couldn't extricate yourself from her mouth. Pretty much. It was like two leeches going at it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good old fashioned uh, leech off. Newsreader Abby joins us in the studio. First kiss. I've got some really gross visuals in my head now. Um, so my first kiss was another primary school one, and it was my first boyfriend. And I remember everyone basically like coming up at school going, oh, like you've got to meet James, no last name, at the bag racks. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. So, you know, end of school, when I got my bag, standing there awkwardly, and he just like jumps on and starts pa- and I it was foul it was the most horrendous thing ever it was really wet <laughs> yeah. and I remember walking home thinking if that's what kissing is I'm never I'm doing out. it again I'm never I'm doing out. it yeah. again it was foul it was gross done I love the bike racks though yeah. it's like meet him at the bike racks I mean nothing says romance like bike racks yeah. does it <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> producer Zoe, is that where you had your first one? Yeah, that's where I had my first kiss too. <laughs> Ethan, no last name. Um, we, we'd been dating for six months, hadn't had a kiss yet. So, yeah. Six months? Yeah, I think we were 13. A- um, Ethan we had- sounds like he was a bit of a bad boy too. Ethan was a bad boy. Oh, yes. Yeah, he was. And uh, I met him down at the bike racks because we used to ride home together. And then the entire year level just formed a circle around <laughs> us and kind of just stood there. <laughs> kiss, <laughs> kiss, 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 kiss. And he started kissing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, the kiss wasn't that bad, but the cheering was pretty off. <laughs> There's so much pressure in that situation on you, oh, isn't yeah. there? Oh yeah. Oh. Wow, it seems to be a bit of a theme here. Um, producer mm. Sean, wrap it up for us, please. Your your worst kiss. And by the way, we'd love to get you involved. Your worst kiss stories. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. If you get yourself on air, we'll pop you in the draw for first class and fifty k. Yeah.
Well, it wasn't my first kiss, but my worst kiss was I just turned 18. I was at a club. Yeah. Just, you know, going hard on the dance floor, just going drinks, drinks, drinks. Did and you then Spice Girls soundtrack? No, it was five, actually. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Happy five, yeah, right. actually. Um, and, yeah, and one thing led to another and just, you know, making out on the dance floor and then all of a sudden vomit came in my mouth. Oh, oh my God. Jeez. Oh. God. Where Sean. Were, hey, Sean. That was pretty gross, yeah. Where were we at at this stage? Were you passing on with a boy or a girl? Mm. What stage were we at? Uh, that night could have... I think it was both. Jody and Hazy on Adelaide's Nova 919. Yes, good morning to you, friends. 25 minutes to 9 o'clock. Top of 23 across Adelaide today. We're um, just analysing this really, really gross kiss between Harry Styles and M. Rudder. I mean, I don't think they thought it was gross because they seemed to be really into the passionate. moment. This, yeah, it was pretty intense, wasn't it? At really one stage, he sort of pushed her against the van. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. I wonder if uh, I wonder if she had a bit of bash rash after. I don't know. Little oh, Sharon Streslecky vibe. <laughs> Very good. So we're talking, well, not just first pashes, just bad pashes. Ellen from Gaul East, have you got one for us? I do, unfortunately. Um, so I'll set the scene. I was in year eight, so 12, 13 years old. First boy that I really liked in high school. He's taken me outside. He's a good foot taller than me, and I'm, well, five foot six. So we start the pash off, and it feels like he's inhaling me. It's just all lips. There's no tongue. Like, he's just, like, covering my face. And this went on for several minutes. When we eventually awkwardly stopped, he walks me back in and I've got the biggest hash rash <laughs> on the top of my lip. <laughs> I, I was traumatised. Oh, my God. <laughs> so at one point, Ellen, you're like, God, breathe. <laughs> Lips too big. Oh, my God, that's awful. Thank pretty, you. Thank you so much. much. You're in the running for first class and 50K. Let's take one more, shall we? Shana from Mano Para, your worst kiss. Um, so I was about 13 um, and he was the super cool skater boy. So I was so nervous all day and we finally met up and it was horrible. I was mortified. It was wet and it just didn't end. Turns out we ended up getting married and we have three kids. Oh! So really oh. <laughs> yeah, it was. we didn't talk for like six months and then we were best friends for two years. And then, yeah, from 16 onwards, we've been together. So, so he's obviously <laughs> improved his technique then. He, he did improve. Okay, yeah. good for that. I'm guessing as well, Shana, 17 years later, just uh, pashing every single oh, morning. Oh, every yeah? opportunity. Oh, yeah. All, with three kids, we've got all the time in the world, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, 13, 24, 10. I'd love to know a married couple that still pashes on. Yeah, I know. Do you know anyone? I don't know anyone. It's just a quick peck on the lips. That's all i got left in me. Yeah, and I'm happy with that too. Yeah. I'll take that, absolutely. <laughs> Combination more comfy than your cozies. Jump on the What If app. With hotels, holiday rentals, holiday parks, and more, find the perfect fit for holiday you. Book your getaway on the What If app. What if it's Aussie for travel? This story this town has ever seen is huge. This is so juicy. Jody's juice. Well, Gwyneth Paltrow has taken to the stand in court. So she was grilled over her crash with retired Dr. Terry Sanderson in 2016. It was a hit and run ski collision. Um, the former optometrist sued the Oscar winner in January 2019 for allegedly skiing into him and causing a brain injury and four broken ribs, with Paltrow filing a countersuit the following month. So she claimed yesterday in court that all she wants is a dollar in damages. Take a listen. You're bringing this claim for one dollar. I am. Okay, one dollar in symbolic damages. Is that accurate? It's an actual dollar that I'm asking for. Okay, and I asked you as well, well, you learned about that through Taylor Swift because she asked for one dollar in symbolic damages, right? And I think I said at that point I had not been familiar with it, but I since am. Now you are. But at the time, a couple years ago, in 2020, you didn't know anything about Taylor Swift's $1 symbolic damage lawsuit? I was not aware at the time. How, is it, how is it relevant whether the, she got the idea from Taylor Swift or not? I do feel like sometimes the lawyers, the judges, the people who take the witness stands in these really high-profile celebrity cases get very overawed. And the one that I will refer to right now, <laughs> can you remember in the Johnny Depp case? 
there yeah. was there was a witness. She was an expert witness, and she was so overall that she farted on the stand. <laughs> That's right. Well. Can you remember that? Didn't that rattle the courtroom? <laughs> If there's one situation you don't want to fart, yeah. it's while the world's watching you give expert evidence in court in a celebrity case. And she knew it was coming to her. She was like, oh, don't fart, don't fart. <laughs> Boop, there it is. <laughs> oh, no. This is my moment. <laughs> Gwyneth uh. is... Um, Gwyneth is copping shade for saying, they said, oh, how has this impacted you? And she said, well, we lost half a day in skiing. Oh, jeez. You <laughs> just sort of wonder. You oh. just sort of wonder what sort of planet Gwen's on. Yeah, I know, but we put her on a pedestal as well. Like, we put celebrities up here. So no wonder they lose touch with reality. Yeah, I no. don't know. No. I, I feel like we fell in love with... I fell in love with Gwyneth Paltrow because of Chris Martin. Oh, right. Yeah, back in the day. Okay. As in, that's how I found out about her, because I was such a big Coldplay fan. Yeah, well, I'm fairly sure she had her own career established before she married Chris. I'm not saying don't do something like that. <laughs> I'm saying I'm such a big Coldplay fan. <laughs> oh yeah, um, you a big Backstreet Boys fan? Of course. Playing games with my um, I'm only human. <laughs> AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys and his wife, Rochelle McLean, announced in the joint statement Monday that they are separating after 11 oh. years of marriage. Um, I'm sad for them, but I also really like that song. If you could play a little bit more of it, just yeah. so we can ponder on the... Of course. You ready? You ready? ...sad end of the McLean marriage. Quit playing games with my heart. Backstreet Boys, it's probably in the same category as Nickelback, where you're like, oh, I hate the Backstreet Boys, no, actually, and then you go home and then you just violently listen to it and yeah. go, God, I love this. Yeah, exactly right. Um, it's funny, I had this conversation with my husband last night. We're sort of in the divorce era now, aren't we? Like, I went to my high school reunion and a couple of people are going through divorces there. It's like, it's now, we're coming out the other end. You have the marriage era. You know, late 20s, early 30s, where you go to a lot of weddings, and now it's like, oh, that person's getting divorced as well. So then what is it? What's the average sort of timeline? It's, really it like? it's a really good question, what so, the average age is. Because there would be a trend, wouldn't there? The divorce, yeah. yeah. It'd have to be. And all, all I know is January is when people get divorced the most because they're like, we'll just get through Christmas mm. with the kids. And then January, boom. Yeah. See you, Barry. See you. See you, Baz. <laughs> Are you just segueing beautifully into maths? Yeah. <laughs> um, 45, EP Sean is telling Really? 45 is about the age where people get divorced. Okay. Woo. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. I went to the danger zone. So, that just came into my head. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what then. So you've got about, what, seven, eight, <laughs> ten years, years to go, before I know. you need to cross that hurdle, potentially? So, hang in there, Greggy. Sure, you divorced. It's all good. <laughs> oh, Okay. All right, do that. Oh, what is that? Hasn't she already been divorced? Uh, oh, oh, Sean, wow just trying to have some fun. God. Wow, sorry, folks. You bring down the mood. <laughs> oh. Anyway, let's get back up there. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about Cam on maths. He got set, sat, sent packing back to his FIFO job in the Northern Territory last night at the final commitment ceremony. His browbeaten wife, Lyndall, put on her big girl pants and put him in his place. If there is one good thing that cystic fibrosis has given me, it's resilience. All my life, I've had to give up so much. I've been held back, limited, and struggled through trauma and judgment I wouldn't wish on anyone. But I have always thrived in spite of that. I have now been given a miracle, a fresh start, a new version of my life that is completely unburdened and unlimited. I won't spend another moment of that life restricted. Not by my condition, not by my body, not by fear, and certainly not by you. To put it plainly, stay in your lane and I'll stay in mine. I want to build a life I'm proud of and that life does not include you. And Cam's mm. just sitting there going, so are we on or not? <laughs> so oh, just let me know because the barra are abiding back at home. <laughs> so I just want to get back to me farm. <laughs> That's what went through his head. Oh, jeez. Um, EP, Sean, very quickly, jump on the mic, please. Oh, God. How old are you? How long have you been married? How old do you think I am? No, I'm 35. You're 35? Yeah. All right. Mm. You, you got 10 years left in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, That's fine. That's better odds than I thought. <laughs> Jody and Hazy's Ask Us Anything. Ah, uh, yes. That time of the week where you just sort of pull the blankets down and open yourself up. Vulnerability is the key. That was a bizarre, <laughs> was bizarre funny. analogy. It's when producer Sean really shines. Mm. He sees some vulnerability. He just goes, bang. Hey, mate. Hi. 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 Well, our listeners have actually seen this vulnerability, not me. Okay. All right. I'm just a messenger. Hey, come on, then. All right. 
Question number one. So this is from Zoe in Trinity Gardens, and I've confirmed it's definitely not producer Zoe. Uh, morning, guys. Love waking up with you. I would like to know which body part do you wish you could detach and why? Oh, what a weird question yeah, from a Zoe. Strange. God. Uh I would like to take out my brain sometimes and just put it on the bedside table so I just don't have to think about anything. Oh, do you want to hand it over to science? Have you copped a few knocks as well? Do you think you've no, got CTE? No. Is that <laughs> no, what's going on? A few concussions? I'm just a chronic overthinker, so oh, sometimes okay. I would like to not think. Just take it out and just have, mm. a, have a little rest from you for a mm. bit. Coincidentally, I too would also like to take out my brain <laughs> purely for CTE purposes. <laughs> no, I should probably do a study on it. Sometimes before you come in here, you do take out your brain. Yeah. And leave it at home. Leave my, oh, I left my brain at home. <laughs> Again today, Hazy. Yes. Jesus. Um, I, I just sort of wonder, and you've said a few times as well that maybe they should take out my calves and put them in a museum. <laughs> 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 you do, have, you, you do actually have spectac- and, spectacular calves. And I do have a certain single friend. He's not single anymore, but when he was single, we used to oh, joke oh, that he was careful. so aggressively single that when he used to go, it was almost like he'd take yeah, off yeah. a certain body part and just sort of throw it around a little bit. <laughs> You've got some weird friends, Hazy. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Anyway, you. Right, so- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our second question is from Rosanna in Paynham. Um, seeing you're both social butterflies, I know you would have house guests all the time. I don't know if she knows that you actually both have children, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I want to know, what's the weirdest thing a get house guest has ever done at your house? Oh, do you want to fill this one? Or? Oh, well, I did live in share houses for a long time. Good Lord. A lot of mad Mondays <laughs> at our houses, etc. So I remember back in the day, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but um, when I first started working at Nova as a Casanova, um, we did this little stunt. It was, uh, it was a red light district or something. We were all cruising around in mopeds. I don't know if you remember that. Do you remember seeing that? No, mate. Like 30 red mopeds cruising around? No. No. Because it didn't quite cut through then, did it? <laughs> and we took all the bikes through our living room, my living room. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. Thought, it'd be, thought it'd be a fun little stunt on a Monday morning. Took the entire collection of mopeds through the hallway of our house and through the living room. Completely destroyed the floorboards. And it was a rental house, and we yeah. had to pay for it. Yeah, good, thanks. So, funny, though. I got a couple of chuckles. Was it? Worth it. Was it? I'd pay thousands of dollars for a couple of chuckles. Wow. Yeah. Miss me, that speaks volumes about the maturity levels we're dealing with. Excuse <laughs> me? Oh, excuse me. You rode a motorbike <laughs> through your house, for goodness sake, and thought it was funny. Goodness. I was concussed at the time. <laughs> Um, I had a house guest once who was having a bit of a hard time in her life and I said, that's okay, you can move in with me and the kids and we'll look after you. But then after several weeks, she didn't look like she was leaving my couch. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so How did you deal with that? Yeah. Yeah, well, it had to be a discussion, didn't How it? How did shift her out? Oh, well, I just did. It was a hard chat. Yeah. Mm. Did she still push back or was no, she No, out? no, no, no. She went eventually when she kicked, got herself sorted. Kicked it to the curb, didn't you? No, I wasn't being mean about it. I was trying to help. I mean, wow. Some people just take it too far, don't they? they Sounds do. like you really, really went for it. You can't sit with us! Bang. <laughs> oh, hey, stop saying I'm a mean girl. Can you stop saying that? <laughs> just trying to have dinner with you one night and then... You can't sit with us! Bang. <laughs> kicked to the curb. <laughs> It's all, no. isn't it all flowing? That is Producer the best Shaw. sound effect. It's all sort of flowing it's together now. Jeez, we've learned a lot over the last couple of days. We have, we have. I, 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 genuinely, because I am not, I've never been a mean girl. I've always been a nice <laughs> person. Stop telling people that. Okay. Okay. Oh. And our final question, let's hope this doesn't bring back any memories, is from Steve from Salisbury East. I'm not into this, but have you ever worn an item of your partner's clothing? Yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, I've only worn Cara's sunnies before. Right. Honestly, because she's, she's very small, so nothing would fit me. Even if I was trying to be kinky, nothing would actually fit me. <laughs> no one says so even if I kinky. wanted to go down that path. Um, I wear my husband's boxes and his T-shirts to bed all the time, much to his annoyance. He hates it. What? Hates it. His boxes? Yeah. That's weird. Because they're so comfortable. What sort of boxes are we talking about? Like the, just the bonds. Like his He's running stim- stimpy satin boxes. <laughs> Can you imagine Greg and them? Yes. <laughs> and then you wear them too. Oh, nice. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me you built a time machine? Hazy's on this Daisy. Tuesday, 28th of March. Who wants to jump on the back of my bike and go for a little trip down memory lane? <laughs> Can I have a dink, please? You want a dink? Yeah. I lost one of my little spokies the other day. Did you? Spoke- that dangerous? Do- spokey dokey. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, it feels like that's a separate conversation. Have you got ribbons on your handlebars as well? Uh, 
No, but I do have a basket on front. Do you? No, I don't. That's you. Actually. Yeah, that is me. I'm yeah. a basket girl. Anyway, let's straighten up. 1986, <laughs> Lady Gaga uh, was born in New York. Today is her 37th birthday. Just my goodness, she's achieved some things. She's only 32. 37. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good listening ears, Jody. Good stuff. You just hear what you want to hear as well. Exactly right. Ian Dicko Dixon, born in Birmingham, England. Today is his 60th birthday. I said, Ian Dicko Dixon, don't come back to me and say, oh, Mark Holden. <laughs> Now you're being a smart ass. Yeah. 1944, singing commercials were banned by a US radio station, WQXR New York City, after yielding to complaints from offended listeners. Singing commercials that offended people? Oh, my gosh. A bunch mean, of narcs in the 40s. <laughs> Can you imagine how they would have responded to Sushi Hub, Sushi Hub, that's a sushi that I love. Food pressure, no, the eat now. My son sings that song, walks around the house and sings yeah. that song. Yeah. What about the one my three-year-old sing? Mum's a busy bee, dad's a busy bee, but the busiest bee of all bees, bees is me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> WQXR, we're on to something, I think. <laughs> 2017, the world's largest dinosaur footprint at 1.7 metres was found in Kimberley, WA. The massive footprint measures at about 1.7 metres. Scientists say the footprints are those of a long-necked herbivore called a sauropod. Oh, wow. That's a big old foot. Isn't it? As big as Charlie Dixon's. Yes. He's a size 16, we found out the other day. Monster feet. Goodness me, Charlie. Big feet, big shoes. Oh, is that what they say? I think so. 2018, David Warner was banned by Cricket Australia from all international and domestic cricket for one year due to his involvement with ball tampering the third test of the Aussies 2018 Tour of South Africa. To all of my teammates, to fans of cricket all over the world, and to all Australians who are disappointed and angry, I'm sorry. As captain of the Australian cricket team, I take full responsibility. The top knee-jerk reaction in Australian sport. Oh, what should have happened then? You should have got a slap on the wrist. But they cheated. You, they cheat everywhere. <laughs> Oh, okay. Ask, ask Fath Duplessis. <laughs> He's like, I'm cheating right now. <laughs> Tampering balls, doing all sorts of things. I don't think they're match fix, but yes, it was a knee jerk reaction. Okay, all right. You stick by that then. Okay. Coming up next on SEN. <laughs> 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 that one song on March 28 in 2007 was Glamorous by Fergie. G L A M. Dad's a busy bee. <laughs> <laughs> Survivor wrapped up last night. This happened. Winner of Australian Survivor Heroes versus Villains, Liz. Popular victory. Yeah. What about that? And she joins us now. Good morning, Liz. Hi, guys. How are you going? Good. How are you going? How does it feel now cool. that the cat's out of the bag and everyone knows you're the winner? Oh, it feels so amazing. I'm definitely still in shock. Last night was a big, big blur. Um, and I am slightly dusty right now, but we are here and I'm just so excited. I cannot believe it. Never in my wildest dreams that I think I would be sole survivor and here we are. You say it was a big, big blur. To your best recollection, how did you celebrate it, Liz? Um, a few vodka sodas, a few <laughs> champagne, you know how it goes. Um, couldn't tell you what time I went to bed. Maybe I didn't even go to bed. Um, but no, it, it was a really great night. You know, I had some friends here from Perth and family and celebrating with all the other contestants. And, yeah, no, it was a really, really good night. Liz, can I ask, how much weight did you lose? Because every time you guys go on something like this, it's dramatic, the body transformation that you guys go through, and especially yourself being an athlete. Uh, you'd be all across something like this. Yeah, no, it was actually quite wild. I think I lost about 10 kilos. I mean, I don't have a whole lot to lose in the first place. Yeah. Even last night watching, I could really see all my rib cage coming out and my bones, which was quite confronting. But, hey, I feel like it's all a part of the game and everyone is shredded by the end and we all look very, very lean. But that's survival for you and that's the whole challenge, you know, is pushing through that hunger and pushing through that pain and getting to the end. I was going to say, how did it make you feel, though, feeling a bit emaciated and feeling so hungry all the time? What was that like? Honestly, I feel like the crew will tell you I was the hangry one. I was <laughs> on edge all the time. Like, I'm a massive foodie. I'm a big eater. 
in the real world. So the lack of food just killed me. Like, I think I cried every second day. Oh, my God. I feel like you also just get used to it. And then, you know, you have those rewards where you win a beautiful meal and you get to share it with the contestants, and that really uplifts you. So... It's just like a big roller coaster of like starving, happy, starving, happy, winning, losing. Like it's just all, oh, it's a lot. Oh, <laughs> it's like God. working in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a roller coaster. Hazy won't let me eat his food. I'm starving half the time. Hey, Liz, what were you craving? Like, was there a moment where you're like, oh, what comes to your mind if it's a junk food or a particular food? Oh, uh, honestly, burgers. I'm such a big burger person, like, I'm probably going to order at McDonald's shortly. Yeah. Um, out there, if you saw in that, in that food reward at Merge, I was like, get me that burger, get me that beer. I didn't even consider anyone else. I put my hand up and it was mine. I'm such a foodie. Burgers are my favourite dish. I also love, like, Italian, Japanese, Mexican, <laughs> like... Oh, I love it all. Get, love it, all. get it all in there. <laughs> <Get> it all. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, dear. Obviously, this game is all about ducks and drakes, lying to people, putting your morals to one side. How did you reconcile all of that? I started the game very open-minded. I kind of took each day as it came. And as the game progressed, and obviously, as you guys all saw, George kind of stabbed me in the back with Shani. And I feel like from that point forward, I really started to differentiate the game between real life. Yeah. This is a half a million dollar challenge. And it is necessary to make some dog moves, as you would say, <laughs> and stab people in the back and put yourself first. And it is hard to watch back because that's not the person I am. I would never do that in the real world. But when you're out there, you really need to like differentiate. This is a friendship. And this is a game and we're playing Survivor and there's half a million dollars in the line and you need to be cut for it. You need to chop heads. Mm. Congratulations, Liz. You're now ready to work in the media. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Um, uh, just before we let you go, that half a million dollars, what are you going to do with it? My God, where do you even start? Oh, my God, I don't even know. Like, honestly, I feel like I want to be really, really smart with the money, given the economy at the time. Um, I really want to invest. It. I want to help support my parents, maybe take a Europe trip, buy a Louis Vuitton handbag. <laughs> yeah. Well, Liz, you're a fair chance to drop 150k at Macca's this morning, no doubt about that. <laughs> Go and enjoy it, Dal. Well done. Congratulations. Yeah, Macca's on me this morning, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> This is how it works. Two fans, one port, one crows, competing against each other with a crows fan answering a port question and port fan answering the crows question. It is the best of five. I'll keep score. You ask the questions, Andrew Hayes. All right. Let's go to Josh in Modbury North. Josh, you're a big old power supporter? Absolutely. All right. So what are you, what, 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 thoughts on the weekend? Happy? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, not really. Not really. Yeah. I think we'll be able to start this week, though. Yeah. Okay. That was a right old thumping, wasn't it, Josh? Oh, uh, it was terrible. Yeah, mm. hard to watch. All right. Yeah. Josh, this morning you are up against Luke from Hyde Park. Good morning, Luke. G'day, guys. How are we this morning? We're great, thank you. Your love and passion for the Adelaide Crows. How deep is it? Oh, look, deep, but not so far this season. It's been a bit embarrassing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's good, solid, honest feedback. Right, okay. Mm. All right. Okay, you guys both across how this works? Yes. yes. Okay. Question one will go to Josh, the Port fan. Go, Andrew. All right, Josh. Who was the Adelaide Crows player who wa walked over hot coals at a pre-season training camp? Um, oh, my goodness. Um, let's just go with Taylor Walker. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Why, why do you assume the text did it? <laughs> oh. uh, that is incorrect. Even though this doesn't count... Um, Luke, do you know the answer? Um, I'm trying to think. No, I can't. I can't think of it at the moment. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. This is a famous vision of Nigel Smart. Yeah. It's <laughs> running across the cold. Uh, weirdly, you're not allowed to do that sort of stuff now, Hazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Who would have thought? Oh, I mean, the players coming through these are <laughs> <laughs> so precious. <laughs> All right. Uh, Luke, your turn. What Port Adelaide player wears number 13? 13. Um... No clue. Let's just say Ollie Wines. Ollie Wines. Okay. Not quite. Uh, Not quite. Ollie Wines, number 16. Nilo. All 
All right, let's go back to Josh. Josh, who is the current yep. Adelaide Crows captain? That would be Dawson. Oh. Yeah, we'll take Dawson. Woo. Woo. Don't even need his first name, just mm. Dawson. There we go. We're on the Dawson. board. Well done. Okay, here All we right. go. We're going back to Luke. For Luke, this might be a bit of a tough one. 1-0, by the way. Luke, what year did the Power first make the finals? Bear in mind, they entered the competition in 1997. So let's say 2001. Oh, oh. It's 1999. So that means, Josh, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, are you heading to showdown? I am. Very good stuff. Hey, Luke, thank you so much for jumping on board and having a crack. My pleasure. Beautiful. Beautiful. There we go. Port taking on the Crows this Saturday night, Adelaide Oval. Book your tickets now at portadelaidefc.com.au. I can't wait for the showdown Saturday night. Oh, my God, I love it. There's a lot to play for. Port's pretty much completely healthy. It's just Trent McKenzie on the sideline, and you just never know. Is it a Port home game or a Crows home game? It's a Port home game. Oh, which means we get a bit of never tear us apart action. You do. And you also get the prison bars. Oh, yes. They're coming back. Stories. One's yeah. a truth, one is a lie. You can identify correctly at least one of them. $100 Schnittaus voucher. How good? I'm going to go first because this one is real fresh for me. Okay, so you know how I had my high school reunion on the weekend yes. back on the Gold Coast. Yes. What about this magnificent piece of gossip? So there was um, a good friend of mine. Um, his brother I sort of dated for a little while. So okay. you got that? Yep. One of my good friends met his brother. Like, oh, you're a bit of all right. So When was this? Back in the day? Back in the day, like yep. year 12. Okay. Um, so we dated for a bit. Anyway, I was speaking to his brother at the reunion and he said, I said, what's going on with La 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 and I won't name. And he goes, he's actually in jail. <gasps> wow. We're done for embezzlement. Embezzlement. Mm. Okay. Google it. Can I just, yeah, <laughs> how did you know? You just see my face. Just quickly, Yeah. in as few words as possible, what does embezzlement em- actually mean? Embezzlement is when you rip people off from money. Okay. Okay? Oh, dear. Ooh. I should be in trouble. No. Oh, I'm such a good judge of character, aren't I? Embezzlement. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so he's, he's locked up. What sort of stint are we talking? Uh, he's Well, I said he's been there for two years, and I think he's got about six months to go. Okay. Yeah. Go. Yeah. In real life, mm. not as sexy as it is in Sons of Anarchy, is not it? No, we spent some time in jail. Well, he wasn't Jax, that's for sure. No. How oh. good's Jax too, by the way? Jax, Jax I'd, wa- I'd wait two and a half years for Jax, <laughs> if not longer. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, look, that's a very uh, believable story. Yep. Um, especially considering uh, these guys from the Gold Coast. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, no, right. Just kidding. <laughs> um, all right, here's my story. So I would have been 25, I reckon. And a couple of... I wet the whistle one particular night. Okay. And we got ourselves down to an establishment known as The Archer in North Adelaide. The Archer. Frequent joint that we haunted. Mm-hmm. Um, and whatever Hang happened, on, wait, wait. That was a real AFL haunt upstairs at The Archer, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, we weren't allowed up there. <laughs> <laughs> Those boys. Okay. <laughs> Unless we were delivering them drinks, I suppose. <laughs> Um, and down says, oh, I don't remember what happened. I reckon my girlfriend at the time, I spoke to her on the phone and I got in a, we must have gotten a bit of an argument. And I have taken my frustration out with my fist into the door, which is like a window door. Yeah. And it straight away, I didn't think it was very hard, but bang, and then just the glass just shattered without falling out. Do you know what I mean? Like just spiderweb right up there. Right, okay. So then I've gone, oh, no, I've got to get out of this situation. So I'm going, I'm weaving my way through the crowd. And then... Like the, in your head. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, I was like, oh, nothing to see here. <laughs> and then I hear the bouncer go, get him! <laughs> and then I'm out the front of the archer. And I'm running at about oh, seven clicks, I reckon. I'm going really, really slow because in the off about three months prior, I had torn three adductors off the bone. Ouch. Water skiing. Yeah. So it was my first real proper run. Okay. And the bouncer, and we're cruising down O'Connell Street. We're heading towards that sort of bush bit. Yeah. You know, at the top of O'Connell Street. Otherwise known as the Parklands, yes. Yes, the Parklands, <laughs> the bush bit. You know what I'm trying to say, though, don't you? And I'm with my housemate who is so fit. He's unbelievably fit. He's running backwards. And yeah. I'm going, I'm done, I'm done. I'm just going to stop. And he's going, no, 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 In his words, I'm professionally going to put it. He's a big boy. He's not going to catch you. <laughs> yeah. And the bouncer's going, I've got you, I've got you. 
Anyway, I pushed through and we ended up um, hiding in the parklands, as you, you call them, yeah. for a while <laughs> before the heat died down. Anyway, long story short, next morning I went into the Archer yep. and fessed up mm-hmm. and said, that was me. See that little crack over there? That was me. Yeah. Had to pay for a new one. Cost me about $270. Okay. And the manager at the time actually gave me a six-pack because he said, thank you so much for coming in and admitting it. So you got rewarded for I, your bad behaviour. I got rewarded. So from that night onwards, every time I'd go out, bang! No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. And the lesson for all the kids listening in cars is, no, yeah. don't punch windows. Don't punch windows. Don't punch anything. No, exactly right. Uh, all right. 13, 24, 10. Which story is true? Which one is a lie? Oh, Let's recap. Two stories, one lie, one truth. Yes. Uh, so my story was about the fact I went to my high school reunion on the weekend and found out a, 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 an ex of mine um, was in jail for embezzlement. Wow. Mm, we heavy. all learnt what embezzlement means. <laughs> yeah. Some of us already knew. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Minority, I would have thought. Um, so I told the story about how I um, punched a window in the Archer and I was chased by a bouncer down the street. Yep. Uh, and then eventually he didn't catch me. But the next morning I went in and confessed, had to pay, cost about $270. Yeah. Another little extra detail of that story is I woke up the next morning and I was in a world of pain. Yeah. Turns out the night just got a little bit away from me. Uh-huh. As it does sometimes. Sometimes it does. Very rarely, mm. but sometimes it does. Mm. And in my uh, room's up the other end of the house. My housemate then came into my room and said, I've just spent the last 10 to 15 minutes talking to the cops out the front who are <gasps> looking for you. Right. And you can only imagine what sort of panic I had oh after God. that. Yes. He was lying too. Okay. Yes. All right, Luke from Glengarry. Good morning, Luke. Hey, Luke, how are you? Hey, good. So how are it's you? It just helps when Hazy touches the buttons, so he mm. like basically picks up your call anyway. Luke, who's schnitting you at the moment? Well, when I first pulled up, I thought 100% it was you. Yeah. But now I'm just thinking that both just good actors. Ooh, okay. okay. So which way are you going to go, so, Luke? But, <laughs> so what you're saying is, Luke, that you you think we're both full of schnit. Nah, so I'm thinking Jody's story was really, like, just hesitant. It was, okay. oh, what, what's he in jail for? Uh, embezzlement. Yeah. Ah, okay. yeah. Luke, Luke, you're really but, drilling down here, Dov. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going I'm to go with you, Jody. That I'm lying? Yeah. You'd be 100% correct. Well oh, done, Luke. Well done there, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> very good stuff. $100 shit house for you, Luke. Thank you for that. Enjoy. Thank you. There you go. It's very thorough, Luke, wasn't he? <laughs> good stuff. Tomorrow on the show, Dead or Alive makes a return. Uh, showdown Throwdown, your chance for Showdown tickets once again. And Toby from the Temper Trap, we're going to catch up with him as well. Looking forward to that. Yay. All right. Keep it locked and over throughout the day for more opportunities as well to score yourself some Showdown tickets. Yeah, very nice indeed. All right. Catch you tomorrow. Jody and Hazy on Adelaide's Nova 919.